Hey everybody, welcome to Monday Night Live in Lexington, you guys. My name is Katherine Kaufman, and I'm a psychic medium here in Lexington, Kentucky. Welcome to my Every Monday Night Show. This is where we discover what and who we are in this journey called life. So, happy Monday, everybody. Let me check the pages and make sure that they're scrolling okay. A special shout out to all of you guys over here on Instagram. Nice to see you tonight. Let's do some shout outs on Facebook. Special shout out to Sandra Buchanan Clemens. Good to see you. A big heartfelt hug and kisses to Melissa Begley and her sidekick, Miss Cleo. Regina Rice, Matt Frazier, Zoe Wheeler, Angela Atkins, Leanne Linton Salzer, Jaden Richardson, Taya Moore. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, I'm going to switch over to the professional page. Hey to Anissa Sturgill. Now, for those of you that are joining on the professional page, the um, personal page is the main one that I do the um, live chat with that you can ask me questions on. And so I did leave a link in the description uh, to the video if you are on the professional page and you want to join us for the live chat or ask a question, hit that link and come on over here to the personal page. Hey to Taya Moore, Leanne Linton Salzar, Scott Webb, thanks for joining us. I am also going in the comments to leave a link to my YouTube channel. And that's where you can find all of the old episodes. Past episodes uh, consist of things like Black Eyed Children, Ghosts and Spirits, What Happens After You Die, why are spirits still in our realm, uh, how to see an aura, all kinds of things, uh, and plus some more paranormal topics are all on the YouTube channel. So if you go to the YouTube channel to watch, please click subscribe and the bell notification so that you get to see all the new uploads. Hey to Mary E. Nasser. Um, now, tonight's episode we've dedicated to shadow work. And this is all uh, kind of stemming from uh, a lot of work that Carl Jung put into it. So Jungian shadow work is what this is. And, you know, as we're socialized as kids, we're taught to really repress. I mean, we're taught to repress our shadow side and to always strive to be good. But sometimes that's not a good idea. There, and here's my saying for tonight's show is there's something bad about being too good. <laughs> In other words, half of us is bad naturally. The other half is good. And so if you're constantly striving to be good, you're suppressing half of your persona. So you're not functioning at 100% as an authentic person with the people and the relationships around you. So it's really important to incorporate that bad persona or the dark persona and really try to be 100% authentic with the people around you. And in accepting your own darker persona, you're also helping yourself accept other people's faults and their darkness. Hey to Ina, Anissa, Jay Ross, Debbie, Ina, special shout out to Rolando and Carol Thomas. Thanks for joining us here. And shout out to all you guys over here on Instagram too. Uh, and also, if you guys on Instagram have any questions, 
you can put them in the comments. I'll try to watch the feed and see if there's something there that I need to answer. Also, for you guys over here on Facebook, same thing. If you have a question, drop it in the comments. If I don't see it in the feed, because sometimes it goes pretty fast, uh, I promise you I go back after the show and look at all the questions. And if there are ones I missed, I go ahead and address them. So tonight we're going to go over several tips uh, for you to engage your shadow self. And uh, like I said, if anybody has any questions, just let me know. Thank you, Melissa. Hey to Tom Driver. Um, let me check the professional page one last time before we get into the meat and bones of this. And it looks okay. Hey to Paige Denise also. So the first step to engaging with your shadow self, and this is the absolute most important step, is to center yourself. Okay, that's the most important thing that you can do before you engage in any kind of uh, self-examination or shadow work. Because it's only from your center that you can get to know these parts of yourself. Um, if one of these parts of yourself is blended with you, then it can really hijack you uh, in everyday life. And so what do I mean by that? If you repress the darker side of your persona, then it can take over when you're under stress or in situations of trauma. And so that's when we say things and we do things that we really regret and we can't take back. But if you learn how to incorporate that darker energy, recognize it. It doesn't get out of control or take over or hijack your life um, like it does when you try to repress it. Now, so if you try to repress it, you're going to become very critical of others or very confused about how others are. And it will in inhibit the way that you integrate your shadow self. And so haven't you ever seen somebody who's just so good that they're super critical of everybody around them? And they really are um, kind of rigid and not yielding to any type of um, reasoning. Special shout out to Mike Lawrence, my son. Thank you. He loves the backdrop. Well, so I have to explain the, the backdrop really quick, you guys. We haven't had any decent snow this uh, year in Lexington, Kentucky, and so I'm doing it. I put up the snow scene because I am I figure if I put the snow scene up, we will get some decent snow, and I'll feel like it's actually you know, kind of festive winter type of feeling. Hey to Chris Dennison and Pam Branson. So the first thing you need to do, again, is center yourself and really become calm, clear in that neutral space before you want to address or start looking at your shadow self. Uh, the second thing that we want to do is cultivate self-compassion. So don't be critical about the things that you mistakenly do because before you get to know your, sh your shadow, it's helpful to cultivate a sense of unconditional love for yourself and sort of a friendliness to yourself. Approach yourself like you would a friend and show that compassion to yourself because one of the, you know, one of the hardest things to do when doing shadow work is to actually look at and examine your darker half um, because we're taught to repress that, number one. Number two, uh, we like to see ourselves in a good light and we're always striving to be better or to overcome or to be good. And so we don't want to look at our failures. We don't want to look at the darker side of ourselves. So if you're hard on yourself, when you make mistakes, it's really difficult to confront your shadow and to accept it and incorporate it. Uh, you need to really recognize that that's 50% of your total persona and, and you are going 
to have that negative happen in your life and you're going to have to face that. And so facing it with some self-compassion uh, really helps in this process. So, um, so if you're accustomed to feeling shame or guilt when you do things wrong, you need to transmute these emotions uh, with self-acceptance and self-compassion. And then if you can practice self-compassion and self-acceptance, when you engage in a darker uh, energy of yourself, that really goes a long way to doing better in the future because um, you're not trying to push it down further and repress it. You're accepting it, you're recognizing it, and you're working with it because you're saying, okay, what does this energy need to teach me for this moment? And we're gonna go into the four steps that you need to practice for the future there. So the number three thing is cultivate self-awareness. Seeing your shadow requires a self-reflective mindset. It's the ability to see yourself almost in third-party view and to observe your behaviors, your thoughts, your feelings, sort of like a, a, in a detached way so that you can truly analyze yourself and how you're reacting or, or working with or against others. Special shout out to Brooke Lawrence, my daughter-in-law, big kisses to you, Amy Butcher, and Trish Lindsay Jaggers. Thanks for joining us this evening. Uh, and Patty O'Brien, too, and Pat Miley. Let me see if I missed anybody. Carrie Beth Hardy and Ann Fisher Smith, Chris Dennison. Thanks for joining me, you guys. I'm so happy you all decided to join me for this Monday night. Um, and on the professional page, a special shout out uh, with Corey Riggins. And she thinks my hair goes perfectly with the background. I have to agree, white and white. <laughs> okay, so let's get on to uh, number three, which is cultivate self-awareness. Seeing your shadow requires a self-reflective mindset, uh, the ability to reflect and observe our behaviors, thoughts, and feelings. Okay, so your self-awareness and your self-reflection, like we talked about just a minute ago, is your ability to see um, the negative side of yourself and how, it, uh, how you evaluate those feelings with regard to it, the emotional reactions that you have with it, uh, without criticism or without judgment. So um, that's pretty important, is to kind of separate your emotions from it if you can and look at it from a little bit of a distance so that you can really be self-aware and truly evaluative of that other type of your persona. Hey to Olivia Powell. Number four is be courageously honest. So when you're not doing right or when you have made a mistake, you fully take that into yourself and you recognize it. Self-honesty and, and integrity is like a huge prerequisite for the shadow work. It's really quite uncomfortable to come to terms with your repressed persona and that's why the ego, <laughs> your ego invests so much energy in pushing that all down to the bottom where you don't have to deal with it. So seeing your negative aspects of insecurity, you know, and like I posted earlier this week, jealousy is one of the, the biggest things that we deal with on a daily basis. And we may not recognize that as jealousy. We may not um, really put that label on it and really evaluate it appropriately, but when you are trying to discourage someone else or you are um, not encouraging that person to fulfill their dreams or to go forward, that's done from a position of jealousy, which is really stems from lack of security. And it's uh, almost always fear-based that I'm not enough. And so 
uh, once you really dig down and see what's going on beneath and try to focus on and address what's going on beneath, if I'm not feeling enough, then I really need to examine that and uh, work with how, what steps or what things can I use or do to uh, get my self-esteem or my self-concept to a point where I can feel better that I don't have to feel jealous and I don't have to try to bring somebody else down to the level that I'm at. So seeing and accepting your insecurities, your selfishness, uh, and those tyrannical nasty parts can be kind of challenging. But the rewards are really uh, quite beneficial. Um, and it really helps you be more honest and focused in yourself. And once you heal some of the things that are going on, uh, it really goes a long way to incorporate that energy and work with it in a more positive way. Hey to Olivia Powell, Kathy Warner Harden, Charles Urban. Hope Dixie's around. I hope you guys are okay. Melissa, um, thanks for joining us this evening. The last one is to record your progress and your development. So you can keep a journal and record your new discoveries about yourself, you know, about what you've discovered about your negative persona, your darker side, and writing the insights down and reviewing them later help uh, t kind of tie in together the self-awareness that you're trying to develop through all of this stuff. Now we're going to go into shadow work exercises. So when you are evaluating these things, here are the four things you need to really go through when you recognize that you are looking at one of your uh, darker moments of your persona. So number one is you need to ask in that moment, to that other half of yourself. Now remember to center yourself first, then ask, why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Be aware of any feelings or any um, flashes of insight that you get in that moment and you want to write those down in your journal. Number two is, what do you want from me? What does that emotion or that instance want from you number three is what are you trying to teach me so let's go back to the jealousy thing so let's say uh, a friend of yours has an opportunity for fame and and money and all that and you feel all of a sudden those pangs of jealousy and they come to you and ask you well, what should I do should I go for this or should I not and you start to caution them not to go for it because your your fear of them surpassing you has taken over so number three what are you trying to teach me would be you've got to address your own fears because your own fears are not doing what you should be doing, which is encouraging that person to fulfill their dreams, to go for it, to reach out. Um, so what that darker persona side is teaching you is that you need to address your own fears, okay? And the last one, number four, is what are you trying to show me? And that would be that it's your own security, insecurity, and it's your fears that are really the crux of that moment that you're dealing with. So this can be, you know, a lot of revelation <laughs> that goes on uh, with yourself and your darker persona, but in the revelation, it really kind of shows you what you need to work on, which in the long run turns out to be beneficial. So, you know, uh, working with your shadow side and incorporating that dark energy can really be a huge benefit. Okay, let's check for questions. Hey to Catherine, Pamela, 
Sheila and Eric Murphy, and I'm going to switch over to the professional page and make sure everybody's okay over there. Hey to Mermaid Mama over here on Instagram. Thanks for joining us. So while you're working with your um, shadow self, here's one of the biggest things that you need to know about when you're working with shadow is when we repress those emotions, we tend to project those disowned parts onto other people. So one of the best ways to identify your shadow is to pay attention to your emotional reactions towards other people. So if you find somebody very irritating or you automatically don't like them, look at why you don't like them or why you find them automatically irritating. Chances are that that trait or that thing that you are completely turned off by is something that you've repressed in yourself. So if you're paying close attention, you can train yourself to notice your shadow when you witness strong negative emotions and responses to others. So yes, you know, the people you work with may be aggressive, arrogant, inconsiderate, or impatient. But if you don't have those same similar qualities within you, you won't have a strong reaction to their behavior. So everything that irritates us by others can lead us to an understanding of that aspect of ourselves so at the end of the day it's helpful to take five or ten minutes to reflect on your interactions with other people and your re related reactions to them so whatever bothers you is likely a disowned or repressed part of yourself that's very helpful. So get to know that part that you're repressing because really working on that part can extremely help you in the future. And you need to um, make it a part of you. And the next time it may not evoke such a, a strong emotional charge when you observe it in others. And so that's one of the other benefits in learning how to work with your shadow self is you recognize and you accept and you're self-aware about those parts of yourself that are negative and you recognize that these parts exist in the people that you deal with on a daily basis and you accept that. And so things that would have normally bothered you before don't have any control over you for the future. So that's another benefit to working with your shadow self. Exercise two for doing this also is engaging in inner dialogue. And this is where you basically kind of talk to yourself. It's called voice dialogue. And uh, so in psychology, they, they recognize that all of us have sub-personalities, and these are numerous unrecognized autonomous parts in our mind, and uh, we need to work with these autonomous parts, and you can do that through voice dialogue. And there are other ways that you can work with your sub-personalities, for example, active imagination, internal family systems, psychosynthesis is one of the ways to uh, work with subpersonalities, but I find the easiest way is just voice dialogue with yourself. And yes, talking to yourself, reasoning with yourself. If you recognize that a darker piece has come out that may need examined, and you're like, What the heck, Catherine? Why did you do that? And then you go through those four things like, What are you trying to teach me? Why did you do this to me? Uh, you know, um, what are you trying to show me and what do you want? You know, maybe you want to be noticed more. Maybe that's what you want. Maybe uh, what they're trying to show you is you need to boost your self-esteem. What are you trying to teach me is work on yourself and then you won't feel badly about somebody else. So this is some good stuff, you guys, to really consider. Because when we don't pay attention to these parts, 
uh, one or many of which represent aspects of our shadow, have a way of influencing our behavior that's not so good that is, like I said, uncontrolled. Have you ever done something or said something and then wondered why you did it or why you said that? That's the repressed part of yourself taking control because it does that when our guard is down and when you get stressed out or when something traumatic happens, uh, the conscious mind is not always in control at that moment and things can happen and things can be said that you absolutely will regret for the rest of your life. So by having that dialogue with this part of our persona and our imagination or talking to ourselves or in a journal, we are integrating um, this part of ourselves into the consciousness. So that's a lot of stuff to do. I'm going to go over those four things when you uh, encounter part of your negative self. Remember to do this. Always center yourself first. When I do centering, I like to put my hands across my chest and that kind of brings my focus and my awareness to the center of the body and it feels grounding and secure and so I'll use this to center with first and then I'll ask why are you doing this to me? Number two, what do you want from me? Number three, what are you trying to teach me? And number four, what are you trying to show me? Now, one last thing before we end for the evening. Hey to Lisa, Steve, and Autumn. Uh, it's also helpful to know the archetypes. And they kind of go into a lot of detail about archetypes. But um, for each constructive archetype, there's a destructive shadow self. For example, the shadows of king, tyrant, and the, weak, the weakling the shadows uh, are the shadows of the warriors, the sadist, and the masochist. So uh, they kind of list that uh, the shadow side of the archetypes are almost bipolar. In other words, there are two shadow types for each archetype. So the first archetype of the king, the bipolar shadows for that will be the tyrant and the weakling. Uh, the archetype of the warrior, the bipolar shadow types will be the sadist and the masochist. And the archetype of the magician, the bipolar shadow side will be the detached manipulator and the innocent one. And it just kind of helps you recognize those shadow types in yourself. Thanks, Paige. Um, I also wanted to let you guys know about next week's show. So I'm getting a lot of um, questions about clairsentience, and I'm referring people to the clairsentient videos on my YouTube channel, but, uh, you know, not a lot of people talk about the ability of psychometry, and it's very developed in an empath or clairsentient. So next week we're going to go into a lot of detail about psychometry and crystals. And that will be extremely fun to talk about. Um, if you guys have any last-minute questions, put them in the comments. I will get to them later. I hope you guys have a fabulous week. I look forward to talking to you next week about psychometry. But I also want to tell you guys, coming up for, for Valentine's Day, we're going to do some special stuff. So the Monday Night Live before Valentine's Day, and I think it's – the 10th or the 9th, I can't remember, but I'm going to do a special show on the five aspects of a true life companion. What are the aspects of somebody you want to live the rest of your life with, and what should you be hoping and uh, wishing for? And then Friday the 14th, which is Valentine's Day, we're going to do a special uh, fun Friday that's a love rating <laughs> and don't worry if you know if you don't have a partner or if your power partners passed on it's going to include you in this love rating promise you that so i look forward to that in the future and like i said next week is psychometry tune in for that you're going to learn a lot kisses from kentucky 
and I will see you guys uh, next week. Have a good one.